All right, guys, what's up? Episode 118, we got Jackie Nguyen with Cafe Cafe, Vietnamese American. Oh, I didn't even realize this till who knows how long into the episode and after even meeting her. Broadway musical artist, uh, actress, actor, uh, well accomplished in that form, in that art. And she's here in Kansas City. She moved here from New York, fell in love with Kansas City. So Kansas City, fall in love with her. She's amazing. And she's come up with this awesome uh, food truck, but coffee cart. So it's you know, like a pop-up coffee shop. And she's doing like Vietnamese style, like Vietnamese cultured coffee. She has like those stools that you'll see in Vietnam that they have at the little uh, food shop, uh, street food vendors. Uh, it's going to be super, super cool. And <clears throat> I didn't know, I don't know very much about the Vietnamese culture. Uh, I was unaware that they had like such a rich coffee history and culture. Very fascinating and fun stuff to learn about. And it makes me really want to open up and learn more about this particular culture and the way that they uh, view coffee and how they indulge it and make it and all that stuff. I'm really just one of those podcasts, this one of these episodes, one of those people that I've met that really makes me motivated to want to learn more. And uh, I've been excited with doing that. Uh, I went to Vietnam Cafe uh, last week and had the iced coffee, the Vietnamese iced coffee, and it changed my life. I can't stop thinking about that. It's just the taste of it. Ew. I can't explain it. Like, she says she's going to have that on her menu, too. So uh, I cannot wait to try it. Uh, October 31st, Halloween. She's opening up for the first time. Uh, go find her on social media. I will post that. Look for it in the show notes. Follow her. See where she's going to be at. And Halloween, she opens. It's going to be great. Figure out the details on that. Listen to this and follow her on social media so you know exactly where and when she's going to be. This was a lot of fun. I enjoyed it. Hopefully you will too. Boom, shalak, boom. Welcome to the Inner Talk Podcast. We'll know topic is off. Now here's your host, my daddy, and Roy the Soul. Thank you for coming to the Inner Talk Podcast. Boom, shalak, boom. Three, two, one. Jackie Wynn? Yes. Is that it? Mm-hmm. Okay. Perfect. You are a cafe, cafe. Yes, I am. Is that am. what it's called? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> cafe, cafe. I've had fun hanging out with you so far. I know, right? Thank you for bearing with me. Of course. We've had some good conversation. Already. Yeah, we have. Got deep. <laughs> we got deep right off the bat. I know. <laughs> she came in asking me about my divorce and kids and all this stuff and just wanting to get in. I was like, all right. Why not? Let's do it. Yeah. I got nothing to hide <laughs> anymore. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Um, Lucid, thanks to Daniel Bartle, a.k.a. Lucid Flows, friend of the show. He kind of set this up, hooked us up to to have a conversation. Yes. And, yeah, first thing he told me was about, uh, yeah, you're you're Vietnamese. I am. And you're opening, or opened, I guess now, Mm -hmm. a coffee food truck thing? Yeah, like a mobile Vietnamese coffee shop. I don't ever think about coffee in, in Vietnamese. Well, now you will. Now I will. For but sure. I never think about <laughs> that combination. Yeah. Is that a big thing over there? Yeah, it's huge. Coffee it's is? Very big thing. Yeah. Huge part of the culture. Um, there's coffee shops like every single street corner everywhere. It's a big part of our culture. Do they grow it out there? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. And uh, I'm actually using the beans that are grown out in Vietnamese farms. So Do you roast them yourself? I do not. Okay. I work with a roaster in New York and she Ooh. she's Vietnamese American also. Um and she works directly with the farms in Vietnam. But I do not roast them, but I sell them and I make coffee from them. So And that's what you do like is the, do you just do coffee in the truck? Yeah. So mainly it's okay. it's a it's Very a coffee excited. shop on wheels. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yes. That's what I'm thinking. Okay. It's a yeah. coffee shop on wheels. Yeah. Pretty much. I, I don't like to think it as... You're like a barista? A, I am a barista. You're a barista. That's what you would be. I am. But now I am, I also own the shop. Well, you're so a business I'm, owner, barista. Yeah. Holy cow. You wear a <laughs> lot of hats. I do. I do. Yep. 
I oh, like that though. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Keep yeah. Well, you're from. Are you from New York? I'm not. I'm oh. from San Diego, are California. From, oh my gosh. Yes, West Coast baby. Um, and I was born and raised there. And then I studied acting actually. Um, and that's what took me to New York. So I I lived in New York for ten years, and then just moved to Kansas City like a few months ago. <laughs> I saw that on your Instagram. It said, "Yeah, SD New York KC." Yep. <clears throat> and the and the San Diego to New York, I can get, I can understand that. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's a crazy. That's a completely different world. Yes, but I understand that. But then in Kansas City, <laughs> that really sticks out like a sore thumb. Like, what the I hell mean, are you doing here? I mean, well, you know people. I do know people. Okay. Well, I mean, I was on the Broadway tour of Miss Saigon, and uh, just recently. I'm thinking of Shen Yin. Very different. Yeah. Very different. I was just thinking, because, you know, like I told you earlier, I'm a mailman. Yes. And we do, uh, and, you know, we send out a lot of ads, and we always do a Shen Yin one. And yeah. I was like, it's, Shen Yin. It's hella different from that. Okay. But we have this inside joke that, never mind. It's, anyway, it's not Shen Yin. <laughs> it is definitely not Shen no, Yin. No, I know it's not. <laughs> but in my head, I was like, I had to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Correct myself. I just did it out loud because that's sometimes what I do. I think out loud. That's, that's cool. But yeah, we were here um, in Kansas City for okay. two weeks um, downtown. And um, my boyfriend is from Kansas City and he's also an actor in the show. And so, um, you know, he was born and raised in Independence and showed oh, hey. me around. And yeah. Nice. And um, you know, we were here during Christmas time. So, you know, the plaza was mm-hmm. super dope, like beautiful and just like very picturesque. Yeah. And the weather was gorgeous. The snow. I don't know. It was just really nice. And um, I I did not want to be in New York anymore. Like 10 years was quite enough for me. Okay. The hustle was like, all right, I, I, I got my fair share of hustle. <laughs> so um, and uh, I wanted to open my own business. Mm hmm. I, I knew that I did, but, you know, California is way too expensive. Um, New York's way too expensive. And then, you know, I was trying to look to see what would be a good balance of the two. And I at, honestly, to be honest with you, I didn't know anything about Kansas City at all. I didn't know where it was on a map. Nothing like nothing. I was like, probably oh. thought it was in Kansas. Yes. <laughs> and I. um I thought it was going to be kind of like r- rural and blank and... Especially if you fly in here. Yes. Because our airport's way up there in the middle of a cow pasture. And that's kind of what I thought mm-hmm. that was going to be, you know, like fields and whatever. Um, But we were right in downtown for, you know, the heart of it all, right by Power and Light, like the theater. And it was just so dope. Kaufman um, Center? Or is that what it is? Star... Starlight Amphitheater? No, not the amphitheater. Okay. It's the theater right downtown. <clears throat> yeah, isn't that the Kaufman? Is it like looks like kind of round and pointy? You know, like uh, a rip no. off of the Sydney thing? No, it's not that. It was another. Oh, okay. It's the broad, the main Broadway theater that's downtown. I can't remember the name. I should know it, but I just know it's like part of the Kansas City Star. Midland. I don't know. I should know better. Maybe but. the Midland. I bet you something like that. <clears throat> oh, the no, Sprint it's Center? not the Sprint Center. That's oh, my huge. God. I'm so bad. I that's should okay. know. You sh- that's OK. You're not from here. It's OK. How true, long have you been here? True. Like f- since May. Oh, you haven't been here at all. Yeah. You just got here. Welcome. Thank you. You got the Kansas City shirt I on. Do. Like you're repping. You're like I'm, this is my home now. <laughs> it, it, it you're put, you're is. planting root. You're planting business roots I here. I like, to. Yeah. You're, you're about to be a Kansas City. And I am weird. Let me tell you something. I'm not from here. Oh, you're not. I'm not. Where are you from? Uh, kind of a little all over. I was born and raised in Michigan. Okay. And then uh, <clears throat> I, I, my mom got remarried, mm-hmm. military brat. Mm. So I've moved over a few different spots. My senior year was in Leavenworth, Kansas. Mm. Okay. Fuck Leavenworth, Kansas. <laughs> and I loved Kansas City, though. Yeah. And so, you know, I'm 18. It's time to, you know, spread your wings and fly the coop. Yeah. Kansas City's dope. That's what I'm finding. Love Kansas City. It's a, it's a small town that's stuck in a big city. And not a big city. It's just stuck within a city. Yeah. It's, but it's very, you get a really home, small town home vibe here. Like people are super cool and friendly for the most part. 
um, networking's great, the artist scene, like all the different artists, like there's just really good positive people here and that's like, what i'm finding it's great it's a good place to start a business i think i pff, so far it's been great for me nice. like people have been super dope and like actually We're a hip really town. nice mm -hmm. like you know in new york people are not nice but they're real and in california people are very nice but fake, fake. As fuck. super fake uh -huh. so like you can't really trust anyone but like here i've been like why are you so nice? What are you trying to get? Yeah. yeah. What do you need? Yeah, you yeah. Know? And it's just because they're nice. I'm like, whoa, that's new. But I love it. I mean, I love it. I think everywhere should be like that. Midwest mentality. It's crazy. It's great. So, yeah. Um, so, yeah. I mean, we just, you know, um, we planned to move here like August of 2020. But then with COVID, mm -hmm. you know, um, I was still touring with Miss Saigon at the time when like COVID hit and then it canceled our show just like all of Broadway, you know, like mm -hmm. canceled. So it pushed my move much earlier here. Um, but it kind of like kicked my ass to start my business sooner, which was really nice because um, I had nothing. I like, you know, my life was uh, a Broadway musical for like two years. And so after wow. not having that, yeah, it was Broadway like. Broadway. You were on Broadway, Broadway? It, yeah, the That's Broadway a big tour. Deal, right? Yeah, it's a big deal. That's a big deal. Mm -hmm. Look at you. It took me 10 years just about to get to that point. Was it my worth career. it? Was yeah. that your goal? Yeah. Get on Broadway. That's, is that like every. Uh, like musical theater actor. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, their, their that's goal. what you were. It was musical theater. Mm -hmm. That's like my my literal You're a degree. Mm -hmm. oh. I'm not going to sing for you now, though. I'm not going to. Okay. Yeah, no, <laughs> I, I like, don't. I'm not. I don't mm. ask. I don't, yeah, I don't. Yeah. But yeah, I'm a singer. Yeah. Uh, like in college, we had to do like singing, dancing, acting. I have a degree. My degree is in musical theater. Damn. Yeah. Yeah. And I moved right to New York right after college. And we need to get you on like a real show after this. <laughs> <laughs> like <clears throat> TV or something. I, get your this name. is a real show. Yeah, you're right. I'm downplaying it. That's a badass show. Yeah. Best show in Kansas City. I think. Maybe we'll win it, too. We'll find oh, out yeah, in a couple weeks. <clears throat> find out in a couple weeks if we win. I do not like my chances. Why? I Because I don't have the followers that a couple of the other shows have. Oh. And then one year, I think the Dark Horse, I think the one that you're not going to expect is going to win. I think it's going to be the First Issue Club, which is a comic book podcast. And they won it a couple years ago. And I just don't know anything about them, but they won it against. I don't know. It's I. I, I don't know how they won. I, so I think they're gonna win because I don't know. <laughs> you I never just, know. I just, they won. I don't know. I think they have. <clears throat> I don't know. Serious nerds. Probably. I don't know. Sorry, I got off on a whole other. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> let's pull. All right. Let's get off this tangent. Okay. Got you. Got you. <laughs> You're legit. Broadway musical actor. I used to be. Used to be. Yeah. Wow, that's crazy. Congratulations on making that dream happen. Thank you. Yeah, Whoa. it was a huge, huge deal for me. It, yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I like, it was not easy though. Was it surreal when you first got on it, on that stage the first time? Like, holy shit, I'm actually here. I made mm. it happen. It was surreal for sure. I kind of go through this like imposter syndrome okay, all the time, especially in that point where you're just like, <clears throat> we, we played, you know, the Kennedy Center in Washington, D.C., like the Kennedy Center, like Aretha Franklin has played on that mm -hmm. stage, you know, like the presidents, like that's where they watch musicals. And I remember being on that stage being like, what am I doing here? Me? Like, what am I doing here? Um, but then it's also a mixture of like, no, I, I should be here. I worked my ass off to get here. Like 10 years of hustle in New York, the grind, you know, like hundreds of thousands of rejections and like, yeah, I should be here. You know, it's just a big weird wow. mix. Yeah, it's a weird. And also like musical theater actors, it's not as glamorous as you think. Like, I don't think it's glamorous. It's not. You don't get paid that much. You, right. you work too much for... I don't know. It's it's definitely not like TV and film where they get paid a lot more. Mm -hmm. Theater people 
kind of get. And you guys are working. Yes. Like all the time. Like yes. working all like the time. Like when you see that show, it's <clears throat> live. Yeah. Like we're actually doing yeah. it in person. You, you have know? to have that down. Mm-hmm. How much prep work and like so when you were going through the grind, the New York grind. Mm-hmm. What does what do you mean by that? Like you're just doing any shitty little play. Like did you ever watch the show Friends? Yes. Joey. <laughs> yeah, he's a. Uh... <laughs> you know, he would always do what, any kind of tiny little yes play. Is that like that's what you're like doing whatever you can? Yeah, but like the grind also is like okay, typical day for me in New York, right? Like I wake up at four a.m. Oh shit! Okay. I work at Starbucks and like barista for until you know eight. Then I go to um, an audition and then I go to another audition, like three auditions in a row. Like it could be dance or musicals or commercials. Right. You don't get paid for auditions, by the way. Right. Those are just job interviews. Right. You right. just have to go. And then that can take all day until maybe like three or four p.m. Then I go and babysit nanny um, and then you go and cater at night. So like you're basically doing any type of jobs around auditioning to make up. You know what I mean? Like, so that's what I mean by the hustle Mm -hmm. is like you're working just to make rent so that you can audition like you're working to audition. And that's just that's before you even book the job. That's the grind I'm talking about. That's the dream. That's chasing the dream. You are literally chasing the dream. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And I would work the Javits Center, which is like their convention center there. Mm -hmm. They would hold huge like comic cons like that's where they have like all their events and they always use actors because it'll be like fast paced like events. So I would sometimes like sell sunglasses at a sunglasses event or, you know, like pharmaceutical things would need people to pass out flyers or, you know, Comic Con would need people to set up booths like you are literally doing everything, anything that pays you money, right. anything. It doesn't matter. And. They're just like, okay. Hustling. Yes. Straight hustle. That's the New York hustle. It Damn. is. It and you guys sucks. are all doing that. Like a lot of. Every single actor. Whoa. There's not an actor that hasn't catered <clears throat> or babysat or nannied or, what you know, is a waiter. You know, it's just, it's, it's really tough. And then you get rejected every single day from an audition. It's like hundreds of auditions to one maybe. It's not even a yes. It's like a maybe. Mm-hmm. What, how old were you when you went to New York? 21. Okay. Yeah, 21. Whoa, that's a good age to go there, though, right? Yeah, I mean, your 20s, like, fuck it. Uh-huh. <laughs> you got the energy. That's that time if you're going to hustle in life and chase the dream, do it at 21. Yeah. You're going to be poor no matter where you're at anyways. Literally. You don't you don't know shit about life yet. Yeah. Like, you might, you, you're like, oh, yeah, this is life. Sure. This is, well, yeah. Yeah, so you, I, I went. It was awesome. I don't, I mean, I loved every minute of it, but... And on top of the hustle, New York, you know, is like you have to ride the subway. You don't really have a car. So when it snows and you need to go grocery shopping, you need to go to the grocery store, carry your groceries up and down stairs on the subway. This is the shit people don't tell you about living in New York. The is, real shit. Yes. Carrying your laundry like four blocks down in the snow. Because you don't have laundry mach- laundry stuff in your apartment. It's too no, small. Too small, too expensive. And rent is like. You could buy a mansion out here for a tiny studio in New York. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, like you're just trying to stay afloat, not even make money or save it. Like you're just trying to break even every month. It sucks. Yeah, it sucks. But what was your first break when you're like, mm, I got I can get ditch one of these jobs or something or I don't was there I a- got the uh, national tour of How the Grinch Stole Christmas. And that was like a Broadway tour where we got to like travel around the United States and, you know, do a Christmas show in all the Broadway houses. How fun would a Christmas tour be? It was amazing. I mean, everybody's happy. Yeah. And you're getting paid to travel. Yeah. It's awesome. How are you traveling? Mm, By plane. They flew us everywhere. First class or? No, just. Just coach or whatever. Just coach, whatever. That's fine. I don't. But it was free. I mean, technically, yeah. And then you got paid and like you got food. And then you just got to like perform and go to cool cities. Like we were in Toronto for three weeks. Ooh. Yeah. It's cool. Like it's the hustle's worth it when you well, make the dream's it. worth it. Yeah. yeah. That's where you're chasing the dream. And when you hit the dream, it was worth it. Yeah. But when you're not, God, it's awful. Just does so much on your psyche and your your heart. Yeah. You're just like 
how can I make it through the next day? Because every and and you get judged on your looks, you get judged on how you sound, how tall you are, everything. It's it's a weird industry. Nobody, show business. Nobody's judging you on how tall you are. You're right now, because you're short. Well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. It was a bad joke. Just because you're not tall, so no one's judging you. <laughs> Never mind. If I have to explain it, it's not funny. Well, <sighs> so it's just I been just a long day. Just let that one go. Uh, let that one go. It was funny in my head. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. So yeah, I was an actor up until literally this March. Oh, okay. Yeah. This March. You had always wanted to start a business, though. You, you said always. Yeah. Always. Did you always have a certain kind of business? Was it always coffee or is it just, no. I want to own a business. I, I want, I just Be my wanted... own boss and run my own hours and do my own shit. It was less of being my own boss. I don't mind, I don't mind having a boss. I think it's just more of like, I wanted to feel somewhat proud of like owning something. It's less of like, I've, I'm better than you or like, I know how to run things better. I, it's not even like that. It's like, I wanted to be proud of, own ownership and like being like oh yeah i can like look at that you know and be like oh that's mine like yeah. i created that and like that's really cool you know and um yeah i i don't know that's I didn't, crazy i didn't know wow. i wanted either like a bookstore at some point like i really oh, love bookstores and it's the wrong century for that <laughs> <laughs> I know, exactly but i don't know i always <clears throat> when when i was on tour I, i've toured a lot and like Every time you tour in a different city, you get to see like cool coffee shops and you're always looking for like the cool thing in town. You're always asking the locals like, oh, where should I go? And they'll be like, oh, this bar, this coffee shop, uh, this whatever, you know, is cool. And I always was like, oh, man, a coffee shop or bookstore would be cool. But I didn't really know what I wanted to do. I just kind of felt like acting was not gonna be my forever mm -hmm. um as much as i love it it's just it's, it's it was i don't know i something in me was like it's not fulfilling it's, no it it's <clears throat> too hard sometimes and it really messes up like your emotional s state um, of your confidence a lot you probably oh go you probably a roller coaster huh you take super it so, high and super low so low you take it so personally yeah you know um There'll be like a million <clears throat> Asian girls in a room, right? And they all look like you. They all sound like you. And well, that's you, a little racist. I mean, I'm just typecasting. <laughs> and uh, you don't get the job, mm -hmm. you know, every day, every single day. You go and you go and you go. So, yeah, I don't know. I just, um, I didn't consider like, oh, I want to be a business owner. I didn't think about that. I just mm -hmm. knew I wanted to put my life in a different direction. At some, some direction that was not acting. That's crazy because a lot of people just be like, I'm good enough to say I, it's, I'm proud enough of myself that I made it on Broadway. But you're like, oh, fuck that. That was dope. I did that. Great. But I want to be proud of something I make and do myself. Yeah. And that's crazy. I love that. Yeah. I mean. That's what I was telling you earlier before we started. I was like, I just meet these people. You're one of these people, these exceptional human beings that oh. are just doing yeah. shit like that. Like, damn, like you're going for it. Another dream. And you're going like. Yeah, I'm just. You had one dream, crushed it. You're like, you like, you made it to the biggest level you can get, and now you're like, all right, now I'm gonna start from the bottom in a whole new city, yeah. and just here, let's. Who wants coffee? Who wants Vietnamese coffee? You've never heard of it, but try it. You want it. I just don't have anything to lose. Like, yeah. I think a lot of people should have that mentality. Mentality, like, what do I have right now? Nothing. Mm -hmm. If I give it a go and give it a shot, what? What? If I actually fail. I'll still have nothing. You, it's like, might as well try. You only have something to gain, right? Like, that's what I see. So it's like, well, if this doesn't work out, I'm just right where I started. <laughs> like, which is fine. I'm totally all right. Yeah. You know, I, I'm all right. I think. Um, th that's what my mom always taught me. You know, so she was always like, well, you don't have anything to lose. Might as well try it. And that's like a big thing that has like kept me going is just being like, well, whatever fuck it <laughs> like really just fuck it let's do it i want it you yeah, want, want it bad it. enough because a lot of people want it but a lot of people don't want it bad enough they're not actually going to do something about it mm -hmm. and you're doing you've been doing it now you're starting all over i am from the ground up <laughs> and so you had recently a soft opening or something right mm -hmm. but now is that 
Now you're open, open. Like, are you? No, I'm actually okay. waiting for my. Well, not waiting, but my grand opening is going to be on Halloween. Oh, cool! So, um, I'm doing little like pop up events to kind of like lead up, build some hype. Get your to name it. out there. Yeah, and kind of practice. Like, honestly, I, I've never owned a coffee shop. I've never owned a business. Um, I've had a lot of like experience working for Starbucks. So, like, that's like some experience that I have. But do do. Some baristas look down upon that, like like a non Starbucks barista. Be like, you're at Starbucks. What do you know? Some people do. I don't like that because I think anyone who's like that judgmental is like, okay, get find find something else to. All right, hipster. Yeah. Get your ass out of here. But because go I go lift something heavy. <laughs> <But> yeah. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> um. Well, like honestly, Starbucks really created a pay like a a a way for baristas to walk through because they the the general audience like no everyone knows starbucks everyone knows like certain lingo now mm-hmm. because of starbucks and it's like yo like these these little hipster you know coffee shops w- literally could not exist if there wasn't for starbucks and i'm just saying that because i worked for them and they're a really awesome company so like okay i can only speak from my <clears throat> perspective to being like oh yeah they treated me great like in new york my the managers they always like encourage the individual to like they don't want to keep you you know so i'd always get time off to go audition or they'd since it's such a big corporation like you can switch shifts with people last minute and that really worked for me because i really needed time to audition and like you know foster my art and they were so encouraging for that and i'm i'm always down with a company that encourages you to be like your best self right so And they're huge. Like, I don't know. I, I can't hate on a company that is worth that. I don't know. I'm like, they're doing something right. So I'm but, not hating on them. I drink Starbucks. But there's a lot of baristas that like are like snooty and like, you know, yeah, yeah. blah, blah, blah. But I'm definitely not one of those people. But Oh, Starbucks. <laughs> Get that over here. I want my Ethiopian blend. <laughs> yeah. Whatever. Exactly. You but. taste all the notes. I don't want that burnt. Starbucks stuff where I have to put <laughs> sugar and cream in it. <laughs> but yeah. Um, yeah. So. All right. So you got your barista schooling from Starbucks, if mm-hmm. you will. Yep. And why why coffee? Why did you decide on that? Of, of all the things you have that in the bookstore, you said Kansas City. Yeah. Like you just love coffee. I do. I really love coffee, but I love more. What I love more than coffee is like just like the community that you can create from ah, a coffee shop. Yeah. There you go. I didn't think about that. It's true. But it's tr- like it really is. Like there are people like w- you meet up with a homie, you're like, "Oh, let's go get for c- coffee." Or a mm-hmm. date, "Let's go get coffee." Like work meeting, coffee. Like I don't know. I I really wanted to create something where I as an owner felt connected to c- the community. But was able to still be creative and like fulfill like my artistic tendencies, I guess. But and also because in me being Vietnamese American, growing up with like that culture and coffee being such a huge part of the Vietnamese culture, I just thought it would be dope to kind of mix all of the things that I'm passionate about into one thing. Um, So that's why I was like, I'm going to create a coffee shop that can culture people about coffee and also my culture and hopefully be a hub for like people to gather and you know have conversations like this i know so very little about the vietnamese people that's why i'm culture. here yeah that is why that's here. not a bad thing because no it's not I don't, i'm not now I'm you're not, learning yeah I, I don't feel ashamed about that there's way too many <laughs> cultures and people around the world to yes learn about a lot of them yeah but yeah so, i know very little about i mean there's um and also a big reason why i guess i chose kansas city was because it's not oversaturated or at all uh with asian like population here and I've been trying to date an Asian for years, and I, I like I don't know how to do it here. I don't. <laughs> Good luck. Good luck, because there's not many. Um, but, you know, I, I'm a big believer in when you want to, like, diversify a community, like, you got to bring 
the diversity there too. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know how you're expecting to make diversity happen if you don't go and try and make waves yourself, you know, and there isn't a lot of Asian people here. Like I was trying to do research the other night because I was actually very curious and like Kansas City, only 2% of Kansas City is Asian. Wow. That's it. Yeah. And that's not a lot at all. I'm California is like so many, yeah. right? Like <laughs> so many Southern California. Um, but maybe, uh, maybe Asians just don't like the cold, you know, they don't, <laughs> I don't, I can tell you that right now, but also like <clears throat> amenities and, you know, resources, things that like, you know, cultures need. And mm -hmm. I wanted to kind of look at Kansas city and be like, Hey, like I want to live in this city cause it's dope. How does it, what makes me like cities? Like, why do I want to live in certain cities? And a big thing is diversity for me. Mm. Um, and, it, you know, I, I was like, I think my coffee shop could help with that. Like, it doesn't have to start with, like, diversifying the population, but, like, helping expand people's, like, knowledge about cultures first. Yeah. Um, and exposing them to something they've either are a little bit familiar with mm -hmm. like the vietnam war whatever but other than oh, that yeah. it's like, like the, yeah the gulf of tonkin <laughs> yeah you know what what else do you know and <clears throat> certain vietnamese foods and stuff so it's like i'd like to start conversations like that and um, yeah i'm so embarrassed if, when i think about vietnamese culture or anything about vietnam <laughs> i think rambo <laughs> Do you really? I think so. It's like word association. I think Rambo is coming to mind. Like mm. just because that's where it was supposed. To, I don't even know if they filmed it there. Mm, but I don't think but, so. Probably. I don't know. But Probably. that's a big Vietnamese culture for us. Like where our eyes were on it. Not yeah. even the culture. Just, hey. Yeah, I guess the Vietnam War too. I was, you know. I think that's mainly what I think. Mainly. I don't. Yeah, I guess I should think a, of that, right? Was, I mean, I'm. A, I'm before my time. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. So, yeah, I mean. I'm very ignorant, by the way. I'm just putting that out there. How do I respond to that? No, you don't have to. I'm just telling you. I want to know more. That's why I'm excited to hear that coffee Coffee is so big in that culture. It's huge. It's huge. Because I love yeah. coffee. I'm a coffee fanatic. Then you are going to love Vietnamese coffee. Yeah? Yeah, it's, it's bomb. I can't believe you, if you love coffee, you've never had Vietnamese coffee. That's crazy to me. I, I yeah, I like Ethiopian. <laughs> when I, okay. I am, I, and I don't know why, just because that's where all coffee originated in Ethiopia. And then it spread out throughout the world. Right. And the stories, the way it got spread out, there's some fascinating stories about how yes. it got spread. I mean, there's like, one, like how the coffee got to Colombia. One story is like they were doing trading. And there was like a couple plants on their boat and like they were down to one plant and they were doing everything they could to like survive, like save, make sure this one coffee plant didn't die on the trip. And they, I guess they got it there. And now it's everyone thinks, you know, coffee's originally from Colombia or something like mm -hmm. that. It's not. It all originates from Ethiopia. So the stories behind the origin of coffee just fascinates the hell out of me. Well... Did you know that Vietnam is actually the second largest export of coffee? I had no idea. Yes. Folgers, Maxwell House, you're drinking Vietnamese beans. But okay. Like, people don't know that. Like, there's so much shitty things, you know, when it comes to, like, exploitation of farmers and blah, 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 blah. But why my coffee shop it also exists is trying to bring more exposure to Vietnamese farmers because like the more exposure they get the better wages they get okay the better lifestyles they get and so I'm working with a, a roaster in New York and her coffee is called Win Coffee Supply same last name no relation but she's super dope she's a Vietnamese American first generation just like me her parents were refugees just like my my mom and she works with people in Vietnam to make sure that they know that these farmers are supplying the, these beans to America. And like, let's expose it. Let's bring more advo advocacy to these farmers so that like our people back home are making money and right. like not being exploited and like working their asses off, you know? So. Oh, yeah. yeah. Nobody wants to think about that or. 
No, yeah. they don't. Like you want to <clears throat> enjoy a nice cup of coffee. And mm. so many coffee shops right now, like I have found because a lot of my research was like w- using my travels to like talk to coffee shops and stuff. I just feel like no one celebrates the culture of the coffee. Yeah. Like, well, you know, the, the American culture is hurry up and go. Just mm-hmm. grab it. I just I need that. It, it, basically, it's their drug. Mm-hmm. Like I need my speed. I need my caffeine. Yeah. So I'm going through Starbucks. I'm getting my venti with an extra shot, and yep. I'm just probably especially in New York. Go go go! Oh like gosh. they don't have time to have like a culture. Like the cultures, like like the Ethiopian culture, where they're just sitting around a fire, making those beans. All of them just talking for hours and then drinking it. And yep. and like the kids get the you know they they make it and then they add more water, and then by the time it gets to the kids, it's like almost just brown water. But like. Yeah, there's real culture with surrounds coffee. And yeah, it's just hard for America to have any. Like, what is our culture? Our culture is go, 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 get, get, get. Yeah. And I, 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 I want to rewire that just a little bit. We need it. Yeah. There's no excuse now. Like, with COVID? <laughs> I mean, you have time, yeah. you have the internet, you have your phone. There's just so much exposure. There's no excuse. For someone right now to not know something behind uh, something that's so common like coffee. Like I feel like there's so much like with beer and wine and like mm-hmm. everyone has gone so deeply into that. And I feel like with coffee. It's left out. It's it, yeah because people are trying to like push a product and not really like take the proper time to be like okay like what about Ethiopia is so beautiful like how do we you know celebrate the culture of ethiopians Mm -hmm. because of their coffee like do they drink coffee in their every day like why don't we why aren't we doing that also in these shops you know and so um yeah i just want to rewire that just a little bit also because it's personal to me it's like yeah you know um but yeah and i i was like i think because kansas city's literally in the middle it's a good place. Good place to start, right? Do you want um like a a Vietnamese following? Yes. But around more here? Like, so I want every like I don't I'm not looking for specifically for Vietnamese following. But I mean, is that like something that you would like be proud of and like hope for? Is like like specifically like I do like you want like it'd be cool would it be cool like if hey if I had all the Kansas City Vietnamese people like, yeah that'd be dug dope. my shit like is that that would be super dope okay it, but more so than that I would hope that even if they weren't like you know cafe cafe like fiends and coming to my shop like I would just want the, them to have an overall feeling of feeling like recognized of being like oh thank you nice okay cool like they don't have to be part of like some fan club but just to be like oh man that was that's pretty cool that okay. she's like she can speak my language and she's like you know proud of our culture like wow i like that you know like that's all i really need and the cool thing about it is that you're mobile i am because you're you're just taking the culture and just i'm gonna drop off some culture here in independence for a few weeks and i'm gonna drop some culture bombs over here in gladstone and just dropping all these culture bombs all over the place yeah hell yeah yeah and like it was covid was a blessing in disguise for me because i was like bring it on covid i'm saying um i mean I was not originally going to be mobile. That's not what my oh. original plan was. Okay. I wanted a brick and mortar. Like that was, you know, I was like romanticizing a coffee shop and thinking like, oh, how would I decorate how, it? Yeah, yeah. Like this What's will be my little like? nook or whatever. But then when I moved here and COVID hit, everyone's like, you're not going to get a loan. You're not going to get a lease. Like no fucking way. Like we're all, we are like banks. were like, we are, I thought they were giving money away and saying, please no, not for new businesses. Okay. For already established okay. businesses. They were trying to save their assets, which I get. Like, all these people put all their life savings into these small businesses, you know, and they already were starting. Me, I hadn't even started yet. So that's why they were like, we have to save the ones yeah. that are about to fall. It's a business decision. Yeah. Um, and, you know, when I was looking at different, like, buildings they were like uh restaurant and bars at the time they were still closed so i was like they were like you want to open a coffee shop when everything's closed like no <laughs> you're not going to make the rent like what you are gotta you gotta be about? independently wealthy somehow if you wanted to do something like that and i was like yeah. i don't have a dime so um so then you know i was like okay well how do i keep 
my idea going without my momentum stopping right yeah and like i was like mobile like let me try and do i i didn't like the idea of food truck though because i just didn't know how to make a coffee shop vibe around mm-hmm. that but then i was like why not like why not make it <clears throat> what i want it to be like whatever i can i can do it if if it's mine i can make it however i want want it yeah. to be so then i just you know i bought a little tiny home in like belton I think that's what it's called. Belton. Well, you live in Belton? No, no, no. I bought a tiny home there. Okay, okay. And then okay. transformed it into my coffee shop. So it, now it's a little coffee shop on wheels. It's a tiny home on a trailer? Yeah. Oh, cool. Mm-hmm. Ha! Yeah. It's really, it's scary as fuck to drive though. Oh, it's yeah? So, I've never driven a trailer, so it's really hard. You get better at it. I hope. Have you backed it into anything yet? Like <clears throat> I've backing tr- up's tricky, right? I've tried <laughs> many times. I actually worked at an event yesterday, and it probably took me about forty-five minutes to try and back it out of the driveway. And because you're like this, but and when you go left, you want it to go left, but it goes right. Can I help you out here? Just try something next time. Yeah. Are you are you on top of the wheel? Yes. Bottom. Put it on the bottom, okay. and then when you want to go, when you think you need to go left, go left. Okay. Because you're on the bottom. You're actually, if oh, I need to go left. You actually go left. See, when you're on top and you go left, it's turning the wrong way. Oh, okay. But when you're on so the bottom on and the you bottom. think you go left. So put your, put your hand I'm on gonna the. I'm going to try that because mm-hmm, I, I have to practice. I mm-hmm. Honestly, it's like it's killing me how hard it is. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm, ti- I'm tiny and I have this like big truck with this big trailer. I'm just like intimidated, like <laughs> scared I'm going to hit someone. Yeah. So actually someone else who and people had, are already judging you as an <laughs> Asian driver, of course. Hey, female. <laughs> I'm actually a dope driver for a female. I'm not and saying you are. I'm just saying you're getting judged because True. of that. But I I can tell you right now I'm a really good driver. So I believe it. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean Remember that. That's the trick. Okay. Thank you. It works. I appreciate that yeah. actually. I'm gonna I'm actually I'm gonna try that. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, so that's awesome. That yeah, I love that idea. A tiny house on a trailer. Do you bring like chair tables and chairs and kind of sit those out to um, to encourage people to kind of hang out? And... Depends. The first time I've only done. Or, like, oh yes, right. You're not fully open yet. No, these I've only done pop-ups. like five events at the most. Okay. I mean, that's within the span of two weeks right now. Like I've I've just tried to practice. Um, but I do have like so in Vietnam on the streets they have these tiny stools. And tiny tables, and they're just lined on all the streets where there's, like, food trucks, food trucks, food trucks, and, like, carts. Because the Asian culture is very much street food, right? And people come out on the street, and they eat on the street. So, like, literally, they're sitting on, like, the sidewalks. And so I went to the Asian market in Overland Park, and they had little stools, and I bought a bunch so that when I am open, I will put out... You know, little stools yes. like that to try and encourage people to kind of like emulate what it's like to be on the streets of Vietnam. It's very foreign for Westerners because it's not like a stool height. They're very small. So you kind of have to squat on the ground. Um, but I think it's like an experience people should try because it's like that's how all of Asia, like everyone sits like that on the ground, like close to the ground to eat. And it's just part of the culture. So I, okay. I bought a bunch of stuff like that that's to have awesome. next to my cart. I like that. And there's going to be regular chairs and tables at some point, COVID safe wise. But um, I also brought that just to, so people can be like it because I, I did bring them out to my soft open and a, and a few people were like, is that like kids? Yeah. chairs?" I'm like, no, they're for you. Try it. You Maybe know? you have to put like a sign or something out there for the first few times. Like, hey. Yeah. Just like just take a seat, you know. Yeah. And I, I These are for adults. I don't mind telling people that mm-hmm. because not a lot of people would know that that is the culture in Vietnam. But like some people who have traveled abroad, though, are like, oh, my God, we that's what it's like in Vietnam. Oh, I'm cool. like, exactly. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Yeah. So I don't know. There's little moments like that that make me kind of like, you know, warm and fuzzy inside to be like, oh, but like I feel like I'm doing something right. I've romanticized about doing a food truck before because I like yeah I like to cook, and I just like I don't know I think I think that would be fun to do. It is fun. It's hard. I've thought about doing like a little street like type thing just as like a side hustle, like a hot dog stand, but not really hot dogs. I would do like uh, sausage and onions and peppers and stuff like that. You know, you should a, do it. A roll. I know. 
Why not? There's a lot of things I should do. I don't know. Time and I don't know. I, I got Make time. I, yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. It's a, it's a wild industry. Um, it's romantic. A, yeah. To me, thinking about it, like it's you get cool. to travel wherever you want, right? Mm-hmm. It's just like hard physical labor, though. Like, because you are the only one kind of yeah. doing it. So, like... Loading the truck, it's emptying work. it's it's hard work. It's work. Um, I'm not a stranger to hard work, which Clearly, is yeah. fine. You're but quite the worker. I am, but um, yeah. but it's also fun. Like you're like you own your own little restaurant slash you know coffee shop. It's cool. So you gave us your New York day schedule: waking up at four and mm-hmm. banging all that stuff mm-hmm. out. Mm-hmm. How do you think your Kansas City schedule is going to go up? Once you're fully open, what's that? What do we? Well, I'd love to. I mean, um, I'm gonna. I'm working on right now a (coughs) like winter sit down, um, so that I can put my my trailer inside a warehouse and I can like serve Monday through Friday. I'd love to do that, and then keep weekends open for like holiday events and stuff. Since I'm mobile, Um, I really. I mean, the goal is a brick and mortar. I would love to have like my own shop, but I. I don't know where the world is going. (laughs) So the fact that I'm like, I can pack up my business on wheels Mm -hmm. and still serve according to CDC guidelines, you know, um, that is kind of freeing. So I, I would love to do like four or five events a week and, or post up in a, in the neighborhood like Columbus park or river market and be like, all right, I'm going to be here five days a week. Come visit like, you know, this is where you, you so you're so the people aren't having to find me all the time, but still be pleasantly surprised if I show up at like a, a an event, you mm-hmm. know, um, I'm I'm again, like I said, I'm like a, I'm a hustler. So I I would love six days a week somewhere just like all the time. Um, but the reality of it is booking events is like pretty hard right now. Like not not everyone yeah. is having events. They're kind of like you can't have a big public gathering. You have to be very safe. And so like kind of navigating um, a food industry business during a pandemic. Right. Is 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 an adventure in in its own little world. Yeah. I guess in a perfect world, I'd love to do like every day. Yep. Every day. Every day. Every day. So you'll pop up somewhere. Will you just pop up in one place? Like you're saying, like, I'll go to Columbus Park and just pop up there for like all day or for your whole shift. Or you go there for a few hours then then go over to River Market, you know, or something like that. No, like I would just do one location for like. like that's my day. That's my that's my, my Monday is. Is there. Is Columbus Park. My Tuesday is. Like Independence. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like something like that. And that's and you would keep that rotation you're saying like I, mm-hmm. people so they'll expect me to be here on Mondays. Yep. Yep. So it's kind of like bringing, you know, a lot of people with their coffee. It's like a routine, right? Like, oh, I have my my coffee that I make every morning or the certain Starbucks I go to every day or this drive through or whatever. I'd love to be part of like their Mondays. Yeah. You know, be like, oh, my girl. Cafe, my girl cafe. Jackie got me hooked up today. Yeah. I know what I'm doing Monday. Because that's that's the fun part of having like friends and regulars, regulars and being like yeah like you know that's the homie he i see him every wednesday and that is those are the moments i live for because i don't know i i love being like oh yeah when i had a a coffee shop on wheels every wednesday i'd see frank and frank you know would uh, it, those are the things i look forward to yeah mm-hmm. yeah that's part of the romantic part of, of everything of exactly this, this little adventure exactly that's very exciting yeah yeah, I love coffee. I hope it goes well. Thank I, I you. think it, um have you tried any I'm, I'm sure you have, but like like Vietnamese uh Viet Vietnam Cafe. Yes. I have. And there's uh oh, there's a little place I love in the uh river market. Win Win Fun Grill. I think that's what it's if called. If it's like right across if if it's, it's the one I'm thinking of, it's it's Win wait, Fun Grill. No, not that one. No, uh-huh. no, I know what you're talking about. It, no, it's it's in the city market, like right next to the soda shop. Oh, it's I haven't ton- been there. I haven't been there. Is it super good? Yeah, that's that's my that's what I like. Oh yeah. Um, no, I'm I'm still trying to go to different spots. You know, those mom and pop shops is hard because they're like super Vietnamese. So mm-hmm. the, the thing about our culture is like when you're Vietnamese, <clears throat> like if I walk in, they'll treat me like kind of like family. It's not like 
I can't go in there like as a business owner to be like, hi, I own a coffee shop. I have to kind of be like, hi, like greet them like properly. It's just like a cultural thing. I want to like respect their space. It's because like if I, you come in there like, oh, I opened this other business. It's like, very disrespectful because they are already an established restaurant. They're older. You know, they have m- much more experience. So you kind of have to come in there with much more respect to be like, hi, I'm new to the city. I'm just Will opening. they ask you a bunch of questions? I you, just meant, did, would you have you been in there to eat? I didn't even think no. about talking. I, just, I mean, I have been there to yeah, eat. And to these places. Well, they, they're they, dope. Yeah. They're so good. They're legit. Like, they're real Vietnamese places, which is great. Yeah. Yeah. We but, got some good spots. People love uh, Vietnam Cafe I around do. here. I, that's my favorite. Yeah. People love it here. Yeah. Everyone, everyone's like, you know, if I've t- told them I'm opening a Vietnamese iced coffee shop, immediately one of, like, the top answers is like, oh, Vietnam Cafe. Like, that's that's the spot. I'm like, yeah, well, at least, you know, like iced coffee. Is that what you do? Mm-hmm. Iced coffee and hot coffee too? and hot coffee. But like Vietnamese iced coffee is like that's, that's thing? the thing. OK. Mm-hmm. Why? What is what's the thing about it? What does it make? Like, what's, so like what's special about yeah. it? Yeah. So like the way you make it <clears throat> is with this filter. It's like this metal filter. It's very small and it fits over a glass and you pour ground coffee in it and you pour hot water in it and it slowly drips. So the the actual filter is called a fiend, P-H-I-N, fiend. And it's the mixture between um, a pour over and a French press. Okay. And um, so Vietnam was imperialized by the French. And so it's kind of like taken from, from the French. A lot of Vietnamese culture is mixed with French culture. Like okay. a lot of sandwiches, if you've ever had a bun mi, yeah. is French baguette. All of the, um, you know, architecture in Vietnam is like all French architects and stuff. And so um, a huge thing of in, of Vietnamese iced coffee is that it's done in this like very slow process. And then it's done over condensed milk. Um, and then you mix that up. So it's like extra strong and extra sweet. So it's like a good balanced. I mean, and it's it's like buzz like it you will be awake because it's like <laughs> almost double the caffeine hook me up i know that's what i'm saying if you like coffee you will love it i can't i do love coffee i'm very excited about it i want to yeah. know where where are your spot i want I, will you come back on the show again yes after i want to talk to you you know after you've gotten rolling for a little bit and see for sure and, and it's starting to get probably getting late i feel like i don't know i feel like a, you need to get dinner or, <laughs> no i'm good but oh, yeah. it's not that way. It's seven twenty-five. Okay. Okay, we're doing okay. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, once I, I would love to come back, but yeah, Vietnamese coffee is very, and it's very traditional. Like the the slowness of the drip. Again, like when we were talking about the Ethiopian mm-hmm. culture, it's in Vietnam when people have coffee, it's not like for a business meeting. It's not for doing homework or y- study coffee shops, sessions or anything like that. Yeah, coffee shops there are like bars like you go to have a drink a cup of coffee with a friend you people watch the 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 bar the baristas they treat you like family like they're like all right what do you want like they don't even there's no formal like hi sir how are you today like (laughs) they're real people they're literally and that's what i like i understand american service culture there's like an etiquette you expect from a waiter or barista I want to kind of break that down with my coffee shop. I want to try it out. If people don't like it, I, I can like try and like maybe find a good blend. But God, just in Vietnam, I just loved it because they were just treated me like, OK, like you. I met you and, and five seconds later, I was talking about my divorce and kids. Like, yeah, you're going to be great at this. People oh, are going to love it. Thanks. Yeah, because we're yeah, all you got no, Yeah, you got nothing. Wrong. I think that people are definitely going to love it. Like people want person like I'm I go to this place. Uh, it's called Mean Mule. Mm-hmm. It's in the crossroads. It's they do agave, mm-hmm. agave spirits, and it's just uh, become like a regular there. And it just it's it's cool being like a little regular at a spot like that. And because the bartender, we go to the same bartender, and her name's Tiki D. Shout out to Tiki D. Tiki D. Tiki D. Diana. Aww. And uh, yeah, and it's just cool to have that real connection with with someone that's doing like. I'm not going to you to make me a drink. I'm going to hang out with you. And you're going to make me a drink. And yes. Kick it. And exactly. it's just the vibe is going to be dope. And Thank just you. Yes. Small I just, business, real people, like love, like passion. 
That's what I want. I like people love that. That's anyone can make a coffee shop. Like anybody can just make a bar or a restaurant. Like that's not interesting to me. That's yeah, not those personal. investor people that are just looking to make some money. Like it, that's not important. Like yes, I trust me. I would love right. to make a lot of money. Who wouldn't? But what really like lets me feel good and sleep at night and be like, well, I made a friend today, or like, man, that was so nice of you know to get to know that person, or like. The fact that you were so vulnerable, like in five minutes, it was like, I like that. That's who I am. Like, I'm willing to tell you who I am. Right. Like, I don't know, whatever. The world's nuts right now. Anyway, why are we like weird time? 2020. (laughs) Such a weird time. We still have the election to go. It's the, it's the Arm- uh, Armageddon apocalypse right now. It just feels Ooh. so fucking weird. I've been saying for a while, I think this is the spear, the tip of the spear mm. of the fall of the American empire. Ooh, damn. For real, he brought it there. <laughs> right. I think I really believe that. I think when you look at a lot of these other former empires that have all fallen, yeah, we're following a lot of the same paths, a lot yeah. of the same same things. You know, humans just don't learn like we sure we, you don't. know you, you don't learn from history you know you, those that don't learn from history are doomed to repeat it and humans don't learn we just continue to repeat the same shit over and over and over it's just yeah i was having a weird you know like one of those like drunken conversations about like aliens and fucking why are we repeating history like why is this happening so many times and we were just talking about like Maybe we are the experiment. Like maybe like someone else is kind of like seeing how many times will these human species repeat this over until they actually get it. Like what if we are. <clears throat> We're very. You, you're, you are probably correct. You're onto something I talk about all the time is simulation theory. Dude. This is probably really just a simulation and they just keep going through the same fucking playbook over and over. And, we're and about just to, like. We're about to recycle this playbook. The meteor is going to come soon. Wipe us out. Quote unquote. And then we're going to start the program yeah, back over. How do over. we do that better? Let's do. Yeah. Let's do these humans better. This is not working. Like clearly. No, they're not going to do us better. Working. They're just going to let, let them start over again. They're, they'll wipe us out because we've been wiped out before. Where like the world had like 10,000 people left on the world. It'll be something like that. Let's watch them start over again. Let's see oh, if maybe God, they can, let's game. see what happens. You know, certain things will all be always be created again. Yeah. But before it was the pyramids that were created and then people got wiped out. And then now we've got, you know, New York City and the Sears Tower and we got Dubai and we've got mm-hmm. building fucking islands out there. Mm-hmm. Just we've gotten too nuts. We got we're going we're sending fucking Teslas into outer space and just let them fly out there. Into infinity. Like the chip thing we were talking about. Like the Neuralink. Yeah, Elon Musk's Neuralink. <laughs> yeah, like we're getting, Mm-mm. they're going to have to hit that switch on us soon because us, <laughs> you know, complicated monkeys have gotten real fucking sophisticated and we're, we're starting to go, you know, putting shit on Mars and being like, we're, we got Space Force coming. You know what I mean? We're, we're expanding. It's too much for me. I, I, like I, we were talking earlier about adulting. Like, sometimes I wish I didn't know certain things about, I don't know. It's just, like, this aspect of, like, whoa, that's too much. It's just, like, too much. I can't handle that. I cannot (laughs) mentally handle that. Let me go back to being 10. Yeah, innocent. I just want to go back where I didn't have to know any of this. Yeah. Oh, God. But whatever. Here we are. Here we are, but you're doing the damn whatever the simulation number this is. You seem to be doing it right. You're chasing Thanks. your dreams and getting them. Thank you. I'm trying. You have a blue check mark on Twitter. I mean, uh, Instagram. I do. Maybe Twitter too. I don't look. I just I'm an Instagram guy. I do. You have 2,500 followers, but you have a blue check mark. I was like, what is this for? How does how does this chick get that? Um, How'd you do it? And then now story. you're telling me it seems like it's got to be Miss Saigon. Yeah, it, it, it was. It was. It, okay. it was a very. Uh, you're on Broadway. You better have a check. Yeah, mark. it wasn't. It was. It was a good. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I, I got it through through Miss Saigon, and that was like a very nice thing that happened, and I feel very legitimized. Cool. I don't know. It was, it was cool. It is cool. That's, it that's really like cool. a little flex. That's like if I had a like tiny a tiny flex. Though, if I had a Rolex or something, <laughs> I'd be like, hey, flex that bitch every now and then. Look at this. Yeah. But you, you ain't know. got one of these. <laughs> you ain't got no blue check mark. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, I am trying and I, I really am loving Kansas City for real. Yes. I am. Like, Kansas City's going to love you. I hope. Kansas City's going to love you. Kansas City embraces. 
a lot of shit. They're going to embrace it. So far, everyone's been Mm -hmm. like, I'm really, I'm really excited for you. Someone, some woman that I never met brought me a gift today, a literal present. Like, wow. She, I, I'm friends with her brother, but I've never met her. She's just seen me on Facebook and was like such a good supporter. And she was like, I'm going to come visit you today. And she brought me a present and was like, this is for you just to welcome you to Kansas. And I was like, what? That's so nice. Like, you didn't have to drive all the way to me just to give me a present to, like, welcome me, you know? Wow. And little moments like that have been, like, really, you know, wow. Hold on. We're, we're, I'm, I'm on edge here. What was the present? Oh, it was a little bit of um, Barbecue authentic. sauce or something? No, it was actually Viet- Vietnamese cinnamon. Okay. It was really nice. Okay. It was really sweet. Just to be like, she was like, it was some, it's something small. I know. I, I just wanted you to feel just anything was like nice enough. It could have yeah. been like nothing and still like just come out to visit me at my place of hustle. You know, it's like really nice. Yeah. Uh, have you tried a lot of different places? Just uh, like barbecue wise or no, just, just like, pl- places in general, explored Kansas City and like checked out other than like Vietnam, Vietnam Cafe, mm-hmm. but like other just. Kansas City culture and like let's check out the River Market one day or let's check out Crossroads or this yeah and like check out some of the spots definitely nightlife or um they, not the nightlife as much because of COVID <laughs> I moved here like yeah, right yeah, when I it started that, yeah. but I have done like I love River Market I love Crossroads um West Bottoms Westport is like suit like I love Westport <laughs> um to me I don't know so, okay. yeah yeah Westport's a little yeah you know, what yeah you know, dirty. A little. <laughs> well, it's a I, little grimy. I did live in New York for ten years. I, I so. get that. Yeah, I look. I there was feels a, like home to me. There's a time and place for <laughs> it. There is a really good spot if you like French food. In uh-huh. in it's called Westport Cafe. Okay. And it's right, you know, obviously Westport, and it's a good. They, if you like lamb, oh my god, they got this amazing lamb. Okay, cool. Appetizer, and yeah, they got. It's a yeah, cool I've spot. taken a stroll in the plaza. You know, like I've tried to do a few things. Um. It's just been really tough, though, because, like, you know, COVID, like, it's hard to meet friends. And, like, where do we go? What things do we do? Like, you know, it's getting better, though, for sure. Um, But, yeah, I'm still I'm still learning. Still trying to. There's a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Figure it out. But I'm excited. I mean, I like I like being in a new place and, you know, I don't have any like preconceived notions of anything. Like, I just I'm like, yeah, let's go. I don't, oh, yeah. I don't, like like the Westport thing. I was like, I love it there. I don't know. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah, I, I'm not I'm not saying you should. You're right <laughs> to your own opinion. It's fine. There are some good spots in Westport. It's just, yeah. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, it's fine. But I I mean, um, so far and I, I like explored like Overland Park because like there's a lot of Asian cultures. That yeah. Are, like That's, restaurants and stuff. So I've been like looking at that area a little bit. I don't know. I'm just trying to like go to different places do you have a schedule yet for when you do open like where you're gonna be at and when not yet i mean i definitely know halloween day i'm gonna be this is my grand opening from 12 to 4 um in the west bottoms next to fetch i'm gonna be at firebrand collective so i'm gonna be in their warehouse it's gonna be dope i'm so excited um yeah i'm doing like a I'll have my my trailer there and then inside the event space I'm going to be doing like adult trick or treating. Oh cool. So like yeah, it'll be it'll be fun. <laughs> and the perks of like having friends in the arts, I'm having someone on Broadway come and sing, which I thought I think is like going to be really Ooh. cool. Mhm. Yeah, he was on Broadway, he was in Spider-Man on Broadway and all that stuff and so Whoa. I'm going to have him and I'll just have some fun cool things just like cultural things and just try to celebrate opening of business exactly. of my this own. is exciting this is really exciting you know <laughs> i don't know i'm i'm just trying to do what i feel like would be fun and yeah bring some joy and culture to i'm so excited thanks you gotta be there both of y'all gotta be there because it'll be i'll so be th- i don't cool. know if i can do halloween i got my kids that day oh yeah it'll be kid friendly yeah, well okay we have trick-or-treating for kids too it's on Saturday. Oh, it's on a Saturday. I wonder if I'm working that day. Yeah. So like, if I'm off, I'm coming down there. All right. And I'll bring my munchkins. And I have kid drinks too. So like, no, we're things, well, so. I'm gonna bring them a little bit of alcohol. You oh, know, okay. Sure. Yeah. Well, they'll have their own drinks. I will not be doing that. Those are jokes. You, I'm kidding. I'm not giving my kids alcohol. You. 
them yo kids. You First get time I gave my my son Archer coffee, you know the expression bouncing off the walls, literally. literally. Like li- he would run at a wall, jump on it, push off, and then go run to the next one. It's like whoa, he's <laughs> really bad. Like that's not a good idea. No more coffee for you, buddy. <laughs> Yeah, so, so um, I hope you guys can make it down. And like after after my grand opening, I'll definitely have a better grasp of you know my schedule. Mm-hmm. And I'm I'm still working out the kinks of like even doing the events itself. And yeah, it's going to be know, quite the learning curve for you. For sure, this is all brand new to you. All brand new, starting from scratch. It's going to suck a lot. It's going to be yeah. frustrating. <laughs> yeah, you're going to have yeah. But then there's going to be some beautiful moments. I hope so. And I you're already learn. Have. Like learning is so awesome. Like. Learning how to do a new project like that is mm-hmm. going to be I, for me. I love it. Like when I when I started this podcast, I didn't know how to turn my computer on. Like I didn't know I never had a Mac. I didn't know how to turn it on. I didn't know how any shit got p- put together. Yeah. I just started YouTubing and learning how to do everything. That's like, what I've been doing too. Yeah. Go- Googling, YouTubing, asking, calling friends, being like, "What is this? How do I do that?" Like, and that's been helpful too because being like kind of brave to be like yeah i am kind of dumb i don't really know what i'm doing (laughs) but then you find out because you asked for help you know like it's it's a waste of time if you're just like sitting there being like uh i don't know i'm just ask someone who knows what they're doing like they know they can tell you they help you you know yeah it is learning is great it is frustrating though too yeah it's gonna be but yeah oh what am i doing um, Are you going to be uh, documenting a lot of this journey, if you will, like on social oh, media? Oh, boo. I have been documenting every moment of it, actually, from the beginning. Um, on my YouTube page, at Cafe Cafe, please visit it. Oh, you um, got a YouTube. I, I actually have a YouTube page, yes. yeah. And it, I have like maybe 12 or 13 videos already of All like right. the whole process. Like my how, you know, how I got my logo, logo and why I chose the trailer how my soft opening went, which was terrible. I remember seeing that on <laughs> something happened. Yeah. It got canceled or something or. Yeah. My whole event got canceled. So I had to reschedule it. And my generator broke like three times. Like, oh. yeah, these are the things I'm talking about. It's going to be sucks and God. frustrating. These little things. It was like the that. only yeah. day of the week <laughs> that was raining. And I was like, great. My outdoor trailer that needs to be serving people outside. And it's a lightning storm. Like it was. Perfect. It was crazy. That's yeah. what you want. You want to start shitty like that because it's only going to get better. Exactly. Now. And I learned how to do it in in that in the most shittiest situations. I still sold cups of coffee. So I was like, all right, well, if I can do this, you know, I can figure it out. Look out, Kansas City. Yeah. Jackie Wynn is here. That's right. Please come to my coffee shop. <laughs> they will Come meet me. Be friends. You know? I'll, I'll pimp the hell out of it when you start, start yes. getting it. When you start getting your schedules and stuff. You know. I want to meet all the people, like all types. Everyone's like, oh, who do you, who, who's your audience? Who's your, you know, who, you, I was like, ev- I want people all who of drink them. coffee is my audience. Yeah. Everybody. Uh, I'll just keep you just a little bit longer, but like, do you, have you talked to other food truck vendors? Are there things like, hey, let's set up next to each other? Like, is yeah. there some kind of like. Does that kind of stuff happen? Yes, or? there's a community here. Okay. There's a literal I know we Kansas got a lot of food City trucks food here. truck community and they are all amazing. They're good people. Oh they like they work God. together, They're not like yes. there's not beef with no, them. No, there's the not pun. not that I know of. Like I hope I stay really like ignorant to that cuz I so far it's been amazing. Everyone's been so helpful. Like nice. we have a Facebook group and they'll be like, "Hey, this person needs a truck like cuz they're different <clears throat> food. It's not like right. we're all the same." So they'll be like, "Oh, they're looking for a dessert truck or oh, they're looking for a taco truck." And Oh, nice. Everyone's so nice. Yeah, I I've, I've made friends with a lot of them actually, especially like newer ones that have just started too. Um we've all kind of like group together and ask each other questions like because there's a process you have to get like health department licensing like there's all this like bullshit oh yeah that's not it's the fun learning shitty and so I'm sure that's not the fun learning that's, oh no yeah. i don't want to learn about what person i have to talk to for f- what form i need and, yes, yeah i'm not trying that to... part is really shitty but yeah. everyone's been super nice like being like oh that you should go here it's much cheaper to buy your product there like everyone's been super helpful because it's a hustle like I, I think everyone understands like oh you're about to get a food truck let me help you like let me i got you because it's not easy so like 
And I think me being like, I'm not even from Kansas City. Like, they're like, oh, poor you. Like, let's <laughs> let me help you out, girl. I'm like, thank yeah, you're you. You're like you're a cute girl. Oh, God. I don't know if you're an ugly dude, you're going to get that kind of reaction. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think people would still be helpful. <laughs> But I don't know. I mean, yeah, there's a little community here. So Dope. it's been great. Yeah. Nice. And the women here, I'm telling you, they're they are fire here. Like there's a group here um, called Innovate Her. They are a group of entrepreneurial women. Neandertalkpodcast at gmail.com. Hit me up, ladies. I'm telling you, <laughs> these girls are powerful boss ass bitches. And nice. they are out and we are... They have made friends and we've all been like so supportive. Like I, I'm telling you, I don't know what it is about Kansas City, but everybody's been so it's a community here. And I love that. Like I'm like, oh, yes, this is what I want. I I'm want. excited you're here. Thank you. Um, yeah. Kansas I'm City. excited to be here. Um, one more question. then We'll get out of here. OK. Uh, how did you get hooked up with Lucid to do the art for your trailer? Oh, so um, I was looking up hashtags on Instagram. And I was looking up like Casey graffiti, Casey like um, murals and um, Sykes styles. Right. Um, I saw his his art and I was like, wow, I really because um, I'm like a hip hop baby. I have to have like hip hop um, culture in everything that I do. And I was like, oh, wouldn't it be super dope if my trailer was a walk like a walking mural? Instead of just like the regular signage that you see, I was like, oh, I'd love because, I, you know, I'm an artist. I wanted to like make it more artsy. And um, I kept envisioning like, you know, when people go to a mural, like it's obviously like signs of gentrification or whatever. But people go to murals like they make it a point to go take a picture of it. Right. And I was like, what if I went to people like had murals come to them mm -hmm. so when i looked up psych um he was so busy right, right he yeah, was like he's always doing oh my something. god and he was like but my best friend you need to hit up my best friend he's like the perfect guy i was like all right so i i hit up daniel um and w we just like really our our vision for the for the traveling art like connected and i think that that was like okay we we have that same vision mm -hmm. and it i mean if i can't wait for you to see the trailer in person it's, i i'm excited for it, it i love is, his art i mean i've got it around here like yeah he's it is a vision because like uh, it's so eye-catching and that's something that i i guess i didn't expect that i i think when i think about murals and stuff i i think about like colors and i i don't immediately think about like oh it's like you automatically see it i think like I don't know, but there's something about what he did to my trailer. I'm like, wow, I'm, I'm so excited. Like when I drive on the freeway, people are like, what is that? You know, <laughs> which is really cool. A little traveling mural, which is, yeah. And it's all sides too. Every side of it is hand painted. So I'm like, so. He's, yeah, he's one of the realest out there. Yeah. I, I, I love his art. He's, I just, I, I, yeah, I respect the hell out of him. I'm so happy that he yeah. was the one that. Wow, what a, I'm so glad you got hooked up with him. For sure. And what I appreciated so cool. the most about him was um, his re, his care about my culture. Mm -hmm. Like he really wanted to make sure the details were appropriate and authentic. And that Rambo's on the one of the sides. Oh or yeah, something? Mm -hmm. with his big Just rocket little, launcher. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, he was like super like diligent about asking me like, "Hey, is this appropriate? Like, I want to make sure that." You know, there's certain superstitions in the Vietnam cult, Vietnamese culture that I wanted to make sure like my because my mom would be like, that's an uneven number of this. Like, you can't oh, do that. Yeah. Or like I was like, OK, I have to make sure it's legit. And so he like made sure he did his research. He had to like because, you know, again, there's no excuse. And I'm Vietnamese. I can't have it be some like fucking caricature of like the Asian culture or something like I right. want it to be super legit. So that's what I like really appreciated about him was his like spe specificity and like double checking, triple checking, nice. which is like so nice to have, you know, when you're trying to introduce people to something that's like meaningful and like cult like specifically cultural, you know. And yeah, so it, it was great. I'm, I'm really excited for you to see the trailer. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely Instagrammable, if I might say so. Oh, good. Yeah. You're going to have a lot of. Yeah. Make sure you get. <laughs> A hashtag out there when people take pictures of it and get that get that hashtag going. I think it's gonna be hashtag follow the dragon. Oh. 
right? Because my logo is a dragon. And so, and you got to follow it. You got to catch up. Mm-hmm. There's something there. Follow the dragon. And hashtag cafe. It can't be, cafe. It can't be chase the dragon. No. <laughs> no. That's why I say follow. Follow the dragon. Mm-hmm. 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 I love it. Yeah. So that's me in like a little nutshell, I guess. Jackie, you're the best. Aw. So are you. Thank you for having me. Seriously. Yeah. Thank, th- I, yeah. Thank you for agreeing to do this. I of was, course. Yeah. Anytime. All right. Well, I love it. We're going to do this again. I'll be less hungover. <laughs> Sipping your Pedialyte. I'll sipping my Pedialyte here. I will, uh, you know, I'll get some. I'll get cultured before you come back. I'll get. Yes, you'll have my coffee before <clears throat> this next time. So that oh, the next one should be the follow up. Be like, did you like it? What did you think? I'll be honest with you. Yes. No, please do. I well, want. I, I want that honesty. I've lost friends because of my honesty. Then they weren't your friends. Then they weren't my friends. Bitches, get out of here. No. Hate you guys. Yeah. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm misunderstood. <laughs> no, I, I get you. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Jackie Wynn, you're a real one. Aw, thank, thank you for you. being here. Thank you. Uh, if there's anything else you'd like to say, go ahead and say it and we'll get the heck out of here. No, just so, just honestly, like, support the small businesses that's that's happening right now. Like, whatever. I mean, there's so much happening out in the world that's cruel. And I think supporting small businesses right now is going to be so crucial just to, like, keeping the morale up Mm -hmm. so yeah of course yes follow me come to cafe cafe if you want like your coffee but you know really look at all those people who are hustling right now and like trying to just make rent like small businesses please support local please buy local like Mm -hmm. that's just so vital because i'm barely i am barely you know staying afloat and it's like I can't imagine those who have had businesses for years and like now they're yeah. just, you know, I know it's so. sad. It's sad. Yeah. Seeing these places close that have been around forever. Just, uh, yeah. And then second, I, I want to start this kind of like campaign in the future of trying to bring like a little Asia to Kansas city where, cause there's no Chinatown here and there's no little Italy. There's no little thing. So I'm in, in the next few months, I'm trying to like see if people are interested in that and like what they would, like to see like from their experiences like people have that have gone to new york or gone to san francisco and they've seen other chinatowns and other little asias like would that interest people here in kansas city like would that feel Hmm. right and what part of the city i I don't know i just want to like get people's opinions you know so if your listeners out there find that interesting like email me dm me and like let's get a conversation going because i think that'd be so dope i think it'd be dope that little asian market down there in the river market yes get a bunch of little like street you need street vendors i that's think that's what, what you saying. need You need a bunch of asian food street vendors down yes. there to create a little you know a little market you know little i think it would be so cute mm-hmm. and like you know then when tourists it would help tourists tourism too if people are like oh did you check out little asia in kansas city yet no go like that's where you get your dumplings that's where you get your egg rolls that's where you get your tarantula on a stick exactly White people like that. That's what they want to see. I mean, I don't. Is that what you like? Like, I don't want that, and I don't. Even, <laughs> I don't even think that's a cult. I can't I, speak on. I don't think of that's you. really. A, I don't even think that's a real thing. I mm. think those people just do it because they know tourists want to see that shit. Right. That's I mean, true. Yeah. I don't even think it's real. So I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah. That's what you get. You got to bring that down there too. You know, you got to get them frat boys out there that want to oh, watch Lord. me eat this tarantula on the stick. Yeah. It's doing it for the gram. For the gram. Whatever you pay. Yeah. As long as that. I mean, I'll take some dumplings. I love dumplings. That's what I'm saying. Love dumplings. And wouldn't you love to know that that's your spot? Yeah. I get authentic, real. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. So, yeah. So, if people find that conversation interesting to have, please DM me. I'd love to talk about that. So, Cafe Cafe. Mm -hmm. Find me on all the socials. You'll find me. You'll find And Single ladies, DM me too. (laughs) Hit me up. Holler at your boy. Yeah, holler at him. Holler at him. You know what I mean? All right. That's it. That's it. Bye. Goodbye.